Well, I want to talk about sickle cell anemia, and actually it's a disease that affects the black population percentage-wise more than the white population. I don't know why that is exactly, but I have a suspicion that they're not telling a, an effective treatment for it that could greatly minimize the effects of it. And uh, don't mind the fat flag here, because I'm going to tell you right, right now, I've, uh, I realize that the powers that be don't like that flag. And I says, well, hmm, you know, I don't view it as a symbol of racism or anything like that. I just I view it as a symbol of rebel against the establishment and also rebel against the profit-driven medical establishment because they're always talking sweet to you and looking at their nice charts and they got all these degrees in education and they charge you up the kazoo with money if you have money. Or you know, they, or they make money somehow. Either if you don't have the money, they get it from reimbursed through the government or insurance companies or something. And I don't really think they're that interested in health. They talk nice though. They always talk nice, like they care. They always got that good uh, mannerism. Well, some of them do, and some of them don't. I don't know. But anyway, uh, with sickle cell anemia, it's actually a condition that you can, you will have at birth. And there's a lot more black people affected by it. But there's one, well, there's probably several vitamins that could probably help minimize the effects of it somewhat. And I know that isn't being emphasized by the profit driven establishment medical people, you know, because they're about money. Um, you know, if they have something that they can prescribe that costs them a lot, that costs a lot of money and they got a real big high profit margin on it. They will prescribe it. There's no doubt about it. But if it's cheap, it's from nature, they don't like it, right? So I always look at it like rebel against the establishment medical. I look at this flag as like rebel against all the bullshit, you know? That's the way I look at it. So I'm being kind of politically incorrect, but uh, in a different way, <laughs> you know? Because <laughs> I, I don't like how they, they made this thing like... Uh, I know it is associated with hate some by some people, but it's like, uh, it's a mixed bag, you know? But anyway, um, so this is going to be a different twist on this with this video. But anyway, um, there is there is one fundamental difference in vitamin D production between, like, Caucasian people and black people. You know, people have darker skin. It takes people with darker skin... It's like your vitamin C gets produced in your, I mean, vitamin D gets produced in your skin through sunlight. And you can also take it through, like, you know, cod liver oil, you know, through nutrients, too. But um, a, a lighter colored white Caucasian person will get a lot of vitamin D from about 20 minutes of, of sun exposure. They'll produce a lot of vitamin D in their skin. And it'll be like a, a, a good amount. But a darker skinned black person, it could take hours to get the same amount of vitamin D produced in their skin. Now also, you know, it's known commonly a lot of black people don't like be in the sun like a real, real lot. Like some of these white people like to go to the beach all the time and they go to, so they're getting loads of vitamin D, probably cancer too. But anyway, the thing is that that's something where a lot of people aren't getting it naturally through sunlight and they're probably not getting it through food also so one of the most effective things though that they've been finding and they all and I that's that's what I've been suspecting all along because um, you know it's uh, well a lot there's a lot of prevalence of vitamin D shortages in general in the population in the United States but it's probably I'm gonna say it is for you know because there's various they don't have perfect statistics on it by like you know what race it is or anything but it probably is a lot more severe a shortage in black people now how many doctors are saying you know when you go to the to, you know for checkup eh, I recommend you take a couple thousand international units of vitamin D now that should be plenty I personally take 5,000 you know a day and some people say that's way too much and I'm going to talk a little bit about this, but if you have, this would not, I don't, I don't even say to take this much. I do this, and this is, I don't sell this. I get this from Wally World, you know, and they, it's not something I'm selling. Um, 
But I take 5,000 units of vitamin D3 a day, sometimes 10,000. Um, the best information I got is that the only way where you really can get too high of levels of vitamin D3, it's not really the D3 that's the problem. It's a lack of vitamin K2, which works with the D3. And K2 is like from things like cottage cheese. But almost everybody, and this is actually from you know, the government medical studies, almost everybody that has sickle cell anemia has a severe shortage of vitamin D. Vitamin D is not just like a vitamin, it's a hormone. It's a very powerful hormone that um, will instruct cells to how to repair themselves, and if they can't repair themselves, it'll tell the cell to destroy itself so it doesn't create more mutations of itself. It's a very powerful uh, hormone. It also turns on your immune system, your CD4 cells. If you have a suppressed immune system, it's very good for that. It's very good for your bone density. That's another problem with people with sickle cell anemia. Now, another vitamin I'd recommend to take is vitamin C. I take a lot. I don't even want to say how much I took of this because I remember I mentioned a couple times <laughs> how much I, I take a lot of it, okay? I take the type, though, I don't take, there's basically three types of, uh, I know some people argue about natural vitamin C and synthetic, but per the medical doctors, they were not using anything real expensive like from rose hips or or something like that because if you get the natural vitamin C it could be very expensive the stuff you buy in say Wally this is actually from Wally World to Walmart right uh, this is um, the type called sodium exorbate and it's buffered it's easy on the stomach um, there's all mainly you, you see is um, calcium exorbate which is ester C now that type actually is is fine actually but if you're taking a lot of it you might be getting too much calcium because it's calcium absorbate this is sodium absorbate um, exorbic acid is fine plain exorbic acid is fine but if you take a lot of it it could upset your stomach even more easily because it's more acidic this has a very close to neutral pH I don't I I've been taking a lot of this so I don't want to say how much but it's a lot it's a real lot but um, for people who have sickle cell anemia um, vitamin D would is almost in all cases those people are very very low on vitamin D it's actually a prevalent problem in our nation even back in the I'll give you an example back in the 1920s when they first discovered vitamin D vitamin D2 actually which is the plant-based one you want D3 this is the kind that you know people and animals have um, vitamin D2 is the plant-based the plant-based isn't as good but still it works they were giving people mega 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 quantities of the stuff and um, basically hospitals were emptying out I don't want to tell you to do that but you know in the case of sickle cell anemia you know, I don't want to really play like, I give you a recommended prescribed amount, but it sure would be reasonable to take even a couple thousand units of it, maybe not the 5,000 units like I take. I, I personally would take more than 2,000 units, but most people aren't taking any of it. And you're talking something like that, that's a few dollars for a bottle that'll last you a couple months, easy. So, it could be a great improvement over the quality of life. Because people with sickle cell anemia typically live to be about in their 40s. If you're a male, I think it's 42, 43. If you're a female, about 46, 48. It primarily affects the black community. But it affects, you know, all types of people. But it's primarily more the black community. But I'm, I'm suspecting, and it's not... Well, I'm just putting, you know, I, I didn't really, I just made this association because I read, one, that people with sickle cell anemia are very deficient in vitamin D production per government. The government's even saying that. I'm not saying it's one of those alternative media medical bloggers because I don't trust those guys, to tell you the truth. The other thing is that vitamin D 
is very powerful hormone that can repair your cells. That's another thing. Um, black people generally in America are more deficient in vitamin D than white people because of the, um, the amount of time it takes for the skin to produce the vitamin, same amount of vitamin D in a darker skin person. It, it takes several times longer to produce the same amount of vitamin D. And, you know, you consider a lot of people living up north in the cities and all that type of stuff. Ain't getting much vitamin D. So, it's probably a good thing to do for health in general. But, uh, you know, they will not tell you this in a medical establishment because um, their whole game is money. To put it bluntly. Their whole game is money. That's what they're about. They don't... I mean, I've, I really came up to that conclusion a long time ago. They talk very, they talk very professional. They talk a certain way that you know you, they think you think they care. Oh, we're doing all we can as long as the bills are being paid. You know, yeah, yeah, sure. Um, but also, besides vitamin D and vitamin C, vitamin C has been known as a very powerful hormone. Also, um, as a matter of fact, the one animal. In, actually, some some places you'll read about vitamin C on the internet, and they'll tell you that vitamin C is produced on its own in some animals. That is patently not true. You know what it is? It's almost the entire animal kingdom produces vitamin C in their own body, except humans, primates, guinea pigs, and a certain species of bats. The entire animal kingdom produces their own vitamin D C in the body by itself. The one animal in the animal kingdom, this gives you an idea how powerful vitamin C actually is, it's a hormone. Um, the one animal in the animal kingdom that does not uh, hardly ever get sick and eats all this garbage across the, on, a, on the ground is a goat. Is a goat. You know, a goat, you know, any veterinarian will tell you, goats hardly ever get sick. If they get sick, they're probably going to die because it's something like, I don't know, whatever they got. You know, the goat bubonic plague, whatever the hell they got. They got something that's extreme. But they hardly ever get sick. Um, that, and actually, vitamin C intravenous injections have been known to, have been proven to neutralize uh, rattlesnake toxins from a rattlesnake bite. That's massive injections of vitamin, massive amounts of vitamin C injected in, you know, by a doctor into the bloodstream. But you know, you're not going to get these kind of treatments here in the United States. I mean, it probably could knock out cancer and all this other stuff. A lot of stuff. But uh, besides vitamin D and vitamin D, uh, vitamins D and vitamin C, B12 and also zinc would be smart to take. But you're not going to see doctors. I don't think they. I don't think they do tell you anybody. They, they're, everything's geared around what's real profitable that I can prescribe people. You know, they got to. They got to make money. A lot. A lot of money, and they don't make money off of vitamins. So, just want to put this out here, and uh, also want to like rebel, rebel against the medical establishment, and rebel against the. Uh, profit-driven uh, doctors and stuff, you know, I don't know, I mean, some people, I look at this flag like, you know, when I saw the Dukes of Hazard, they said, oh, the flag is a hate symbol, I was like, I, I, I just got on board with the flag, I said, get the hell out of here, something's wrong with this bullshit, Dukes of Hazard, that was a freaking slapstick, goofy comedy show or some crap, that's all it was, you know, so, I don't know, decided to put it out in this fashion, don't be offended, but, uh, you know, I look at this flag as fight the power, and if they don't like it, there must be some kind of power, there must be some kind of reason for it. So anyway, I'm being uh, uh, politically incorrect at the same time here, but I'm actually telling you the truth. And um, But it would be probably good advice for anybody across the nation to take, make sure you take enough vitamin D3 and especially vitamin C. Um, Dr. Linus Pauling, the two-time Nobel Peace Prize winner, I put so many videos out on this guy, and uh, Dr. Cathcart, Dr. Levy, Dr. William Frederick Kleiner, who 
actually cured 60 out of 60 polio cases before the Jonathan Salk vaccination came out and he used intravenous vitamin C to, to, to affect those cures. I'm telling you right now, man. The money powers are freaking, they suck, man. It's all there is to it. They suck. You know, they're freaking screwed up. Um, I like to know for a fact that these things are like miracles. You know, C and D3. Yeah, I like, and these are just, and these are nothing I sell. I got, I just bought these in Walmart myself, you know. I mean, you just want to say Walmart, well, whatever. I mean, I'm not, I, I don't really go for anything expensive, you know. I, I just buy the stuff that's good enough. You know, this is a sodium absorbate type, you know, chewable. Probably somebody say that's no good, but I'll say it's all right to me. And this is just plain old D3. Very heavy duty deuce, doses of it, but... That's what I'm doing, so. If you got sickle cell anemia, you know, if you don't want to take my advice on this, because, you know, I'm not a doctor, I think it's, what I'm look, I'm looking at this research, I'm looking at what the, what they're saying, and I'm making these associations where, um, you know, it looks like people with sickle cell anemia are way short on vitamin D, especially. Um, read up on it read up on it on the internet or whatever and see what you come up with um, it probably would be a very smart strategy to do and it may very much improve the quality of life and extend life a lot more so anyway um, fight the power you know rebel against the medical establishment that's why I look at this flag and uh, peace and whatever the hell it is so hopefully uh, gave you some kind of good information here